back to DBX Labs. I know it's been a while since I've done one of these paper intros, but we're bringing it back because today we're making sodium 5,5 azo tetrazole from 5-amino tetrazole. Yesterday I whipped up a batch of this 5-amino tetrazole. I made about 20 grams and I recrystallized it just for the sake of making sure this product is as pure as possible because we're using this azotetrazole to make isocyanogen tetrabromide, which will later convert into isocyanogen tetraazide. Basically, the reaction mechanism to make the sodium 55 azotetrazole goes as follows. In a strongly basic solution of sodium hydroxide, 5 amino tetrazole can be oxidized by potassium permanganate into 5 nitro tetrazole. It won't stay like this very long though because the 5 nitro tetrazole actually oxidizes the 5 amino tetrazole into the azo tetrazole. Sodium salt does explode upon heating, but the silver salt actually is very hydroscopic, so it's very hard to get it to detonate properly. Now this synthesis has been done twice before on YouTube. Explosions and Fire did a video on it, and that was a great video. Reactive Chem also made a video on it that was taken down. He's having a bunch of videos taken down right now, so if you haven't checked out his channel, go check that out. Now, because I don't want to get stuck in a weird situation since I'm working with energetic materials on this YouTube channel, I'm not going to be using exact measurements in any of my future videos working with energetics, solely because I don't want YouTube to look at the videos and say that this is some sort of tutorial. This is not a tutorial on how to make this uh, compound. If you attempt this, there is serious risks involved and it shouldn't be attempted. The procedure that I'll be using to make 5,5-azotetrazole in this video is the one outlined by Engager and his energetic derivatives of tetrazole right up. If you want to see the procedure yourself, it's linked down below. So I've got an unspecified amount of 15% sodium hydroxide solution, and I got an unspecified amount of 5-amino tetrazole. We're going to add them together and thoroughly dissolve this 5-amino tetrazole in the basic solution. Once we reach 100 degrees Celsius, we're going to start the addition of potassium permanganate to this solution. As the potassium permanganate oxidizes the 5-amino tetrazole into nitrotetrazole and then subsequently into 5,5-azotetrazole, this potassium permanganate is itself going to be reduced into uh, different per, uh, permanganic uh, salts and then eventually it's going to be reduced all the way to just manganese dioxide. The temperature of the solution is now resting at right around 100 degrees Celsius, so we're going to start the additions of the potassium permanganate. What we're looking for now is a point where the purple color of the permanganate ion remains in solution, even when we add more potassium permanganate. Once there's no more 5-amino tetrazole left to oxidize, the potassium permanganate should remain in the solution as that purple color that we should see. So we added a bunch of potassium permanganate, and it's starting to look purplish and remain purplish even after adding the potassium permanganate. So this is a good stopping point. As you can see, I, I might have spilled a little bit of potassium permanganate in adding it, but I mean, it's not yellow. So actually, it, it's it's purple. So it's it's like as opposite from yellow as you can get. So that that's a plus. And I was deceived by the Erlenmeyer because this is not yet purple, it is greenish. I forget which oxidation state of manganese that is, but post video recording me probably does. So, point is we have to add more permanganate. So I'm pretty sure that I've added enough permanganate now, so let's try it out again. We'll put a little piece of paper in there and dab it. I'm not entirely sure what color that is, but it's dark. And honestly, I've already used enough permanganate, so we'll call this good enough. Besides, it's starting to rain, and splashing permanganate in the rain isn't something I really want to do. Yeah, I just swirled it around. You can see it's, it's purple now. It's good. And with just a little swig of ethanol, we can destroy all the excess permanganate. Now 
Now in order to filter out this mess of manganese dioxide from our product, we're going to have to do a vacuum filtration uh, because the manganese dioxide does a really good job of holding a lot of water in. Only problem is we're going to have to do a really shitty vacuum filtration because my vacuum pump uh, sounds like a dying chicken and in case you thought I was joking with that statement, here is actual audio of it running. Also doesn't produce any vacuum whatsoever. The alternative vacuum pump is to use this step pump that has this weak little spring in there. So that's going to be our vacuum. Uh, and it doesn't work that well. So this might take a while. Since we are working with tiny, tiny particles of manganese dioxide, I am going to use two filter papers to hopefully stop all the little bits of contamination. So after filtering, we do get this piss-colored solution, and it is yellowish-orange, which indicates that we have our product. I found that if you do the reaction using only the water that's in the aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide, it typically precipitates out the crystals very, very fine, which is a good thing because this is an energetic compound, but too quickly for you to even filter it out from the manganese dioxide. And that becomes a problem because then you have it immersed in the um, in manganese dioxide and it's really hard to get it out at that point. Just after decanting off the solution into this beaker, we can already see a lot of product is precipitating out. A good part of the strong color contributes to the fact that this is technically an azo dye. So it is to be expected that you would have strong colors After drying and weighing out the first crop of crystals, it looks like we got 6 grams of sodium 55 azo tetrazole. When rapidly heated from underneath, the compound doesn't detonate all at once. It rather just pops and fizzles in little portions as uh, little bits of the azo tetrazole are liberating the water that's in the compound as the pentahydrate. However, when we heat the azo tetrazole very slowly, we see that the pentahydrate is liberated and we're left with a sort of white powder that is the azo tetrazole uh, anhydrous. Once it's anhydrous, it does detonate very violently. Now let's try out a contained foil test. We can see that the compound still is quite bristant, but it does require a little bit of sustained heating before it detonates. Now the fact that this compound is a hydrate makes me a lot more comfortable with storing this as dry, although I still am going to store it damp just because that's the best thing to do when working with energetics. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you like this content and you want to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.